Hello, health champions. What is the best way to start the ketogenic diet? And what would you want to do even before you start the ketogenic diet? So there's going to be a lot of good information for a beginner here, but there's also going to be a lot of value for someone who's already doing the ketogenic diet because it's going to solidify all the reasons and the understanding that you have of why you're doing it. Coming right up. Hey, I'm Dr. Eckberg. I'm a holistic doctor and a former Olympic decathlete. And if you want to truly master health by understanding how the body really works, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything. So make sure you watch carefully on each of the 10 points so you get the full understanding. And also make sure you stay to the end because I've got a really exciting bonus for you. The ketogenic diet has received a lot of attention in the recent years because people are getting results, but there's also a lot of criticism. There's a lot of skepticism. There's some people who are just totally opposed. And then there's others who say that reluctantly that yes, it does help with weight loss, but you don't want to do it long term. So there's a lot of fears like why would you want to do it if it helps, but you can't do it long term. And all of that is based on misunderstanding. So today we're going to clear all of that out and we're going to give you the perfect way to start a ketogenic diet. A lot of people are afraid, they don't know if they can do it right, and they've also heard about all these reactions, the keto flu, the nausea, the stomach upset, the headaches, and I'm going to show you a way where none of that is going to happen. Number one, I would suggest that you set some goals, and this may sound a little strange. What does that have to do with keto? I just want to lose weight. Well, the more goals, the more reason you have, the more likely that you'll feel good about it and the more likely that you're going to follow through. So first of all, you want to figure out what is your goal. Do you want to lose weight? Do you want to get healthy? Spell it out. Write down five things. You want to get more flexible. You want to get more athletic. You want to have more energy. Spell it out. And then you want to also give yourself sort of the the negative motivation and this I'm not in favor of being negative but this can be very very powerful you write down what will happen if you don't change what will it cost you health wise what will it cost you in terms of quality of life if you don't change anything all right that can be very very powerful because then right after that you look at the flip side of that and now you talk about you spell out even more how do you want to feel? How are you going to feel when you've accomplished all those things? When you have your ideal weight, when you're flexible, when you have the energy, when your life is the way it's supposed to be. Spell it out. Give yourself five or ten different reasons for each one of these points. And then to really, really sort of knock that out of the park, you will write down five to ten reasons why you absolutely will succeed, why you deserve it, why you can do it, and why it will happen. And if you take an hour or a couple of hours and you do this, and then you write it down in an easy form where you could look at it on a daily basis, there is no way that you can fail with this. So the first why is personal. Why do you want to do this? The second why is why keto? What's so special about keto? What is it that, that keto will do that other diets haven't done? So here is where we first need to understand that most of the health problems that we have, most of weight loss, most of all the modern diseases are because of insulin resistance, the vast majority. And the ketogenic diet is a very, very powerful tool to reverse insulin resistance. Because a high carb, high sugar diet triggers a lot of insulin. When we have a lot of insulin for long periods of time, we develop insulin resistance. Insulin resistance uh, creates even more insulin production. 
over time and all that insulin is a storage hormone so it clogs us up it packs on the fat and we develop all these things associated with metabolic syndrome the type 2 diabetes the high blood pressure the cardiovascular disease the increased risk of stroke and also alzheimer's disease and dementia all of these are insulin resistance so how does the ketogenic diet reverse that well fat is the only thing that doesn't really trigger any insulin. So by cutting back the sugars to a very low level, cutting back the carbs, you're gonna trigger very little insulin, but then you need to eat something else instead of those sugars and carbs. And the obvious choice then is fat because fat doesn't trigger insulin. And the second thing that the ketogenic diet does is it produces ketones there by the name. And when you cut back the carbs, the body has to find an alternate fuel source, which is fat. And at first the fat will be in the diet, but as you get fat adapted, your body will start burning the fat off the body. And when the insulin goes low enough, now your body doesn't care if you get the fat from the diet or from the body. It has equal easy access to both which means that you start losing weight and your hunger goes down. But a byproduct of fat burning is ketones. And ketones is the alternate fuel for the brain. So ketones is an alternate brain fuel. If you eat a ton of carbohydrates and sugar, then almost 100% of your brain fuel is going to be glucose. But if you get on a ketogenic diet, then as you get into deeper nutritional ketosis, you will have up to 75% of the fuel for the brain be provided by ketones, right? So that's a good thing in itself. But what's even more important is that if you're very insulin resistant, your brain can also become insulin resistant. And the insulin has different roles in the brain, but basically if the brain is insulin resistant, then it doesn't work quite right and it is lacking in fuel. So now if you produce ketones, then you have a fuel for the brain that doesn't depend on insulin. So you've bypassed the resistance of giving the brain the, the resources. And once you understand all of that, you also understand that I know you want to lose the weight, but the weight is not the problem. The weight loss is not the goal. The goal is to get healthy, to get the insulin resistance lowered and to provide some good fuel for the brain so your body starts working again. Then you'll reverse the metabolic syndrome and all of these things. And guess what? The weight loss will be a bonus but don't focus on it because it's really irrelevant. I know it's sort of what's bugging you and you want to get it done, but focus on the health and understand that the weight loss is just a result of insulin resistance. So you can lose weight by exercising five hours a day. You will lose some weight, but you may not get your body back to balance. You may not reverse insulin resistance. And then it's going to be a constant fight. And as long as you can't, anytime you can't keep up the five hours of working out, then the weight will tend to come back. So you have to get the body to balance. You have to get healthy. Then the weight will come off. Number three thing you want to do is to learn what foods are ketogenic. And there's a lot of misconceptions here. Some people think that it's all about bacon and meat and fat and, and butter. And yes, those are good things, but that's not the bulk or not definitely not all of the food you're eating. So any whole food that is non-starchy is okay. What does that mean? So you can eat meat, you can eat fish, you can eat chicken, you can eat venison, but you want to find a good quality and understand that if the animal was unhealthy, then it's not going to be healthy for you. If the animal was unhealthy, it's going to have all sorts of inflammation and the wrong ratios of omega-3 fatty acids. But if the animal was healthy, then everything was taken care of, the animal's in balance, and it will provide good nutrition for you. Then you want to understand that you can eat fat, 
whole healthy fat and you can eat any non-starchy vegetables okay so broccoli cauliflower you can eat kale and lettuce and spinach and and beans and asparagus there's hundreds and hundreds of different items that are perfectly fine so it's not just about loading up on the fat and eating bacon you can have some bacon but have some some vegetables and some avocado and things with it and then you want to learn to count net carbs and net carbs means that you look at the total amount of carbohydrate in the food and then you subtract the fiber because fiber is technically a carbohydrate but you can't digest it so it doesn't count for you it doesn't contribute to any blood sugar it doesn't give you any calories it just passes through so you don't count it the fourth thing you want to do before you start keto is you want to recover from fat phobia all right we have fat phobia it is so widespread it has penetrated every level of of healthcare and education whether people ha are intelligent or not they just have fat phobia because we heard it so many times but we need to understand about fat that fat is good fat is food it's a normal healthy part of what humans have eaten for as long as we've been around as long as it's not altered all right if it comes from an animal that's healthy then it's not altered if it comes from an avocado or a coconut or from an olive then it's healthy if we take the avocado or the olive or the coconut and we squeeze it and we make oil it's still good as long as we don't add excessive heat or chemicals so that's why coconut oil and extra virgin olive oil and butter are good fats because they are easy to produce you don't have to punish them you don't have to destroy them you don't have to apply all that heat and pressure if it's easy to get the fat out of them then the fat is unaltered and it's a good fat the thing to understand and the biggest reason that they keep putting out studies that show that fat is bad is because they don't understand what insulin does and they don't understand what a low carb diet is earlier this morning i saw another study another article and they said oh look saturated fat is bad and then they said on a low carb high fat diet and they ate 40 percent of calories from fat and 40 percent of calories from carbohydrate that is a moderate fat high carbohydrate diet it will keep the insulin high and insulin plus fat is a bad thing because insulin doesn't allow you to burn the fat it doesn't allow you to use the fat the whole point of this is to allow the body to switch from a carbohydrate metabolism to a fat metabolism and if the insulin is high you're not allowing that switch and 40 percent of calories from carbohydrate is going to keep insulin way way too high it doesn't give your body a chance to recover from that insulin resistance so whenever you see a study then ask yourself how did they study this are they really understanding what they're doing did they keep the carbohydrates below 10 percent or in keto maybe even below five percent because if they didn't it's not a low carb high fat study what you will find is if you do that if you keep your carbs really low and you eat whole healthy fats from good sources then your blood triglycerides will drop within days if you run the blood work they will go down which proves that if you lower insulin you will burn the fats and then fat is a good thing it becomes a fuel not a burden the fifth thing you want to do is to throw away sugar okay some people say that you want to go through your whole pantry your whole house and throw out anything that is not keto i don't think you have to start there but you do want to throw away anything that is sugar anything that is sweet anything that has an addictive effect anything that you know that you can't have just one piece because those things are drugs 
and they make you lose your equilibrium. They make you lose your sense of hunger. They have drug-like effects and they will sabotage your efforts. So you want to throw away any candy, uh, ice cream, potato chips, anything sweet, anything processed or starchy, all right, because they're drugs. What you can keep is dark chocolate and you want to find a good quality that you like and if you can't tolerate it yet, you want to work your way up to where you really enjoy 75% or higher chocolate cocoa content. Why is that? Because at that level, the sugar is so diluted by cocoa that it doesn't have that drug effect. And it's different for different people, so you're going to have to experiment a little bit. But what I find is I like 78 or 85% chocolate. And if I have a piece, then it's very satisfying. I don't have the urge to have another. Right? Whereas if you eat milk chocolate or you eat chocolate with 50%, then the first piece gives you a desire for more and more and more and more and you can't have that. Number six, you want to start measuring something. And I would strongly suggest you get a home kit to measure blood glucose and ketones. You don't need to measure ketones right away because there won't be any, but you want to get in the habit and you want to have the equipment and you want to learn a little bit about where your glucose levels are and how it behaves with different foods. And then as you get ready to go into ketosis, you want to have the kit ready so you can start measuring and seeing what those changes are. Then I would also suggest you get a lab test. Either just go to any lab where you just pay up front or you can get it through your doctor at a visit and you want to get the A1C and you want to get fasting insulin because I've done a lot of videos you could look at why that is important on insulin resistance and HOMA IR and so forth but you want to understand what your baseline is and because First of all, you can see where you are, so you might see how far you have to go, how hard are you going to have to work, what, how drastic of a change do you have to make, but it's also going to allow you to monitor progress other than just on the scale and how you feel. This will be a very concrete measurement. So these are the four things that I would suggest, glucose, ketones, A1C and fasting insulin. Get yourself a kit for home and get yourself a lab test so you know where you stand as a baseline. Number seven is electrolytes. And if you go cold turkey, which is not what we're talking about in this program, in these recommendations, then electrolytes can be a big problem because you're going to lose a lot of fluids, you're going to lose a lot of electrolytes and that's where most people get their keto flu, their headaches, their, they don't feel good. If you do it the way we're talking about, to do it gradually, then electrolytes are probably not going to be an issue and you get plenty of electrolytes from your non-starchy vegetables and you can make sure that you get enough salt on your food, you get a good quality salt like a pink salt or a sea salt, then you probably won't have any problems. But it never hurts to be a little extra cautious because electrolytes are super important, not just if you're doing the keto diet or not. Right? You want to make sure that you, you have enough and you notice how you feel and so forth. It's a very easy way to supplement. Number eight, I would strongly recommend that you start a food journal. You can write it in, on a piece of paper, in an Excel spreadsheet, you can get a, a food app on your phone. But you want to keep track of what you're eating for, for many reasons. The first one is to be honest with yourself. So be totally 100% honest and put everything in there. First of all, you're going to notice what you're actually eating. Some people go, oh my God, I had no idea. I ate 22 times a day. But other people are also going to notice that they, once they get in the habit, then you pick something up and you go, oh, I have to put this in my journal. Well, you know, I didn't really want this. That was just a habit. I just picked it up because it was there. So it helps reinforce what your habits are and, and how to change them. 
The other reason for a food journal is that you can keep track of your carbohydrates. And in order to get into the ketogenic diet, then you want to keep them for most people at least below 50 carbs. But most are probably going to have to get down to 30. And for some people with really stubborn metabolism and insulin resistance, you might have to get down to 15 or even 10 net grams of carbs per day before you start uh, reversing your insulin resistance and before you start making significant ketones. Number nine, learn to cook keto foods. So there are lots and lots of recipes out there. So if you already know how to cook, then just go on the internet, get yourself one or two or three good cookbooks on the ketogenic lifestyles. So you have ketogenic keto recipes. And if you don't know how to cook, then you'd better learn. And it's super easy. It's just one of those skills. Don't give yourself any excuses anymore. Just learn how to cook. And by following these recipes and by picking up a recipe here and there, you're going to learn faster than you think. It's like any other habit, but it's a life skill that you have to know if you're going to be healthy in the long run. So a good goal, I think, is to, on the internet or in a cookbook, find two to three new recipes every week. Just try stuff. And some of it you're going to love and some of it's going to be not so interesting. And then you create a little archive of all the stuff you love. And before you know it, you'll have 10, 15, 20 wonderful recipes of food that you love, food that is satisfying, that's based on actual whole food and then you're well on your way. That's how you turn it into a lifestyle rather than just a diet because diets don't work. If you think you're doing something temporarily, then somewhere in the back of your mind, you're planning to stop doing it and then chances are you're gonna go back to all the stuff that created the problem in the first place. Maybe not all at once, but you'll start down a slippery slope if you haven't ingrained a really solid lifestyle habit. The tenth thing you want to do before starting a ketogenic diet, I believe, is get fat adapted. All right. The whole point of this is to transition from a carbohydrate dependent metabolism to a fat based metabolism where your body learns to burn fat and where it can go comfortably and for long periods without sugar and carbohydrates. That's called getting fat adapted. And the easiest way to do this is to start assuming that you eat three meals a day or let's say you eat three meals a day plus snacks. Then the first thing you do is to reduce the snacks and then you replace one meal with a ketogenic meal. One of those things that you've learned to cook now. So one meal a day is a ketogenic meal. And what you'll find is if you were snacking before, you won't want to snack anymore because the food is going to be so much more satisfying. It's going to fill you up and you'll have no need to, to supplement your, your energy with any snacks. All right. And once your body is comfortable with, once you cut out the snacks and you're comfortable with one ketogenic meal per day, then you replace a second meal per day, assuming you eat three meals a day. So now you have two out of three meals being ketogenic and you are learning to cook, you're learning to eat fewer meals, your body is adapting and, and learning to live off fat instead of carbohydrate. And then once you feel ready for it, now you take all three meals, you replace the third meal as well with a ketogenic meal. So you have three ketogenic meals and you're going to feel very, very good. You're going to feel satisfied and stable. All right. Are you ready for your bonus? The very last thing that you need to do before starting a ketogenic diet is to realize that by the time that you have done numbers, items one through 10, it is too late to start a ketogenic diet. You have already started. You are already doing a ketogenic diet lifestyle. You have replaced three meals with 
ketogenic meals and if you haven't started measuring yet you will find by now if you do that you are having ketones in your bloodstreams and that's probably why you're feeling so much better at this point. So this is how you can transition into it without even realizing you're doing it. People talk about the keto flu and these drastic changes and will I get hungry? And for some people that's okay, you can do that. But in my humble opinion, I would say that if you do it this way, it's gonna be so smooth, you're not even gonna notice it. And before you even have realized it, you are already on track to doing what you want to do, to reaching your health goals, and it's going to be so easy. So congratulations on your new lifestyle. It is not dangerous if you eat whole food and real food and a variety of food. It is what we are supposed to eat. Once you reach your health goal, then you can decide if you want to start introducing a little bit more carbs that may be okay depending on, on where you are. Some people probably want to keep the ketogenic lifestyle at least 80, 90 to 100 percent for years and years and years. Others can probably go 50-50 between a ketogenic and a low-carb lifestyle. Figure out what works for you, experiment, see where you feel the best, where your insulin, where your glucose, where all these different markers work the best and where you function the best. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you take a look at that one as well. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next video.